trying to go live on Instagram. Oh, there we go. I think it, it connected. <sighs> Hi, everyone. There we go. There we go. Yay. Yes. It's always the tech world. Everything takes a few seconds for us to get hooked up. It's all good. I'm so, so happy to be here with you today, Cassandra. I absolutely love Yay. talking to you. I love everything you do. I've known you for a few years and everything that I've seen you put out there into the world is just so magical and you have such a deep well of wisdom. And uh, for me, at least one of my favorite talking points, aside from how to use anger as the portal to growth and catalyze and create deeper connection is also diving into masculine and feminine energies. It's made such a difference in my life and how I understand myself and my relationship. And I've seen that you've been posting quite a lot about that too, and you really have a great understanding of it. So I'm so excited to have this Thank conversation you. with you today. I'm so, excited too. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure. Like, a, oh, anyway, so let's get started. So, um, Maybe we can start off with you talking a little bit about um, what it, you know, what it speaks to for you and why it's important to bring that consciousness and understanding about the divine and feminine dance and dynamic into the world. So for me, the reason why it's so important is because one, we're not really taught healthy energetics between masculine and feminine. We're not really taught like how to be in those dynamics, especially in partnership with other people. And usually what we're doing is replaying old wounds, replaying old stories. And I've seen it as a pattern throughout my whole life. And even though I was very open and loving to my perspective, I had a lot of like internalized hate and resentment towards the masculine, just based on what has happened to me in my life. And I realized it was really impacting the people that I was bringing into my life, the people that I was choosing on a subconscious level. On a conscious level, I thought these were healthy, good people, <laughs> but I dismissed every single red flag. And I just thought, well, if I just do this, or maybe if I just let it go for a little while, things are going to change, or it's just a me problem. And technically, in some capacity, it was for sure. But I wasn't bringing in quality, good men into my life at all. And then I started telling myself, there are no good men. And I see this with so many feminine people is that they say that 24 seven, there's no good men. There's a very small percentage of good men. I don't see good men anywhere. All men are this or majority of men are that, right? They have all these crazy belief systems around who men are just based on their experience, which I understand, but it's just not helpful when you're looking for partnership or you're looking for a good business partner or even just a friendship. You're not going to bring in those quality masculine people. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, experienced it in my own life and my previous marriage and growing up with, you know, coming into it with my own wounds, definitely, you know, wasn't able to identify and choose a healthy man, a he man and his healthy masculine. What I've learned in the last few years also, though, is where I, I have to take my own responsibility for not understanding him when, you know, he was just being his masculine self. And I think that there's been so much that women have been taught to think about men or to feel that we need to be able to speak exactly the same language that it then becomes misinterpreted or twisted for us to think that, oh, well, they're not good or they're not caring or, you know, they don't understand us because we're just not understanding how they're responding. And then we demonize exactly. them, right? Exactly. And then we say there's no good men and none of them are good because we set them with a bar of a feminine bar, I think. And, yes, you know, and that's what's become, especially in my, you know, my new relationship of five years, almost five years, my husband, it's been a journey for me to understand him because he is a good man. But I came in with so much baggage and a perspective of, well, if you're doing this, well, then you're bad or you're mean or you're awful and you're, you're a jerk. But really not. They just communicate in so in such a different way that it, it really is like a different language. And and it's I feel like it's a responsibility that women have to really step up and learn to differentiate between the real red flags, which there are out there and there's no question. Yes. And simply a man that we're just not understanding, right? Because exactly. we're either wounded feminines or, or feminine that have, have had by virtue of the, you know, 
path of life that's and we've ended up on had to step into our masculine. And so then we try to be the dominant masculine in the relationship. And when you're trying to do that with a masculine man, that's not going to work either. Um, and, <laughs> no. you know, right. And, and I just, it has been, it's been a beautiful journey for me because it's allowed me to learn how to be feminine again and understand my own feminine nature and then understand him without demanding that he respond the way I want him to, because that's how I understand things, you know, and, and, you know, sadly, and I'm, I'm not trying to get political here, but just in the terms of like the way society has been, you know, oriented over the last few decades, women have been taught a certain way to perceive men um, and, and the demands that we make on them. And I, I've come to really feel like it's just, it's not fair. You know, it's really not fair of us to do that to them. Um, So that it's become quite a passion for me to try and, you know, promote that deeper understanding because when you can, and it, it doesn't mean disempowering yourself at all. Actually, it's more power empowering. Um, Mm -hmm. It, it, it will allow those good men out there also to regain faith in good women and allow, you know, greater connection and deeper relationships to be built and formed. I totally agree. Absolutely. And that's been kind of the problem with the shift and things. And again, not wanting to get political, but it's like, it's going into the extreme feminine side in which they're doing literally the same thing that you know, the patriarchy has done. And now it's turning into like the feminized version of that, which I'm not sure how that's any better to put them in the same position and say, well, this is what we've had to deal with. It's just not helping. It's going to make things a lot worse. And we're going to go through the same cycle, but it's just going to be the feminine version. And then everything's going to burn down again and repeat, repeat, repeat. (laughs) So this is why we need to break that cycle now. I agree. And because I think both have ended up sitting in their toxic embodiment, right? Like in the toxic the version of themselves, right? And, yes. and and holding on to those wounds and becoming very resentful and di- vindictive. And resentment is the ultimate poison for any relationship or interaction. Oh my gosh. So, you or know, even any organization, absolutely. you know, like look at these big organizations, the more people like enable that type of toxicity, the larger it gets. And we turn into a world where we have all this crazy stuff happening like right now. Absolutely. So, so let's turn it into like, let's create this discussion around the, like, what, how do we see the positive in the masculine? Where do we see the healthy in a masculine man so that we can recognize him as a good man? What, what are things that you, you would say to look out for? So the things that I always say to look out for is start looking at masculine provision. So when people think masculine provision, they automatically think just money. That is sure a little part of it that, yeah, he can provide monetarily. He's financially stable himself. You know, he has his own sense of ambition. He's not just doing nothing with his life, you know, but also kind of same goes for women too. But at the same time, there also has to be that sense of reliability in a man. That's a part of masculine provision is reliability and also um, connection, like it's that sense of belonging, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sense of belonging is a huge, huge one. It's almost like that sense of inclusion, not just with him, but also in his life and yeah. how he sees you in the future, right? Because yeah. if there is no sense of belonging, there's going to be no sense of future together, you know? Yeah. And there's so many great traits that men do have, like that sense of groundedness. Yes. And especially for women, when they might get a little bit emotional or there might be other stuff going on. And especially me as a healer, I'm constantly working in different dimensions, different healing aspects. And I always ground myself. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I ignore the physical embodiment. But I know that when I'm with my partner, I actually feel extremely grounded in his presence. I feel very connected. And the other things to look out for as well is just the fact that they are very present. They're Mm. supportive of everything that you do. And it's not just about being supportive when it's convenient for them or when they're getting something from it. Do you know what I mean? So I've had that happen to me with the wounded masculine where they're supportive until we're not together. And then that's the first thing that they start attacking. Mm. So you know it wasn't genuine. (laughs) So you can tell that when they're supportive, no matter what, regardless of what's going on, then they're actually in their healthy masculine here, but they're also very protective. 
And yep. here's a huge feminine wound about protection. They think it's jealousy. They think it's uh, something unhealthy, like your property to them. And I understand some people might act that way. But when a man like really cares, when someone is really in their deep masculine energy, they want to make sure that you're safe and protected at all times. So them checking in on you is not a controlling behavior. It's them making sure that you're okay, that you're safe, that you made it home, that um, nothing bad has happened to you. It's their way of checking in and making sure that you are protected. That's a part of their role. Absolutely. And, and, and that's also, there's that line, right? It's, it's the healthy protector versus the man who's the wounded man or, or, you know, the to- I hate that toxic word, but you know, the word where they use it as a mechanism to really lock you down and not give you the freedom because a man in his healthy masculine really just wants you to be happy in whatever you're doing. As long as you are happy and safe and feeling fulfilled, that's when they, that's, that's their role fulfilled. As long as they can enable that for you and support you in it, that's their way of protecting you. Right. And it's when they see that you're off, you know, that they might, you know, show up a little bit more stronger to make sure that you're on track, but um, it's the fine line of how they use it and what's, you know, how it's presented to you. As long as, like the way I see it is that protector, they're meant to give us that space, that container for, and, and they're this, exactly. like you said, they're stable and reliable and solid and foundational. And the feminine is creative and wild and emotional and neurotic. And, you know, but we can go back to cavemen <laughs> and like all how we're biologically wired because of our physical vulnerability and we have to care for the children and things like that. There is a higher level of vigilance and vulnerability for us that we innately just we were constantly aware of. But as long as we can do that within their space, right, and they can exactly. contain us and help keep us safe and remind us continually that we are safe as we go through it that's the that's their role right and and you know like as you said the the financial provision i think that's just a function of modern times right like they're not going out to kill the the mastodon you know like there's how do we provide in a modern society financially and so yes that is their role and you know maybe not to the extreme where they're the sole provider but at exactly. a certain point, they they for them themselves need to feel that they are providing and contributing to the family's security and abundance and exactly. food and you know all of the necessities. Um, that's very important for them. So, like you said, a man who's just kind of sitting there doing nothing really isn't in his healthy, healthy masculine. He's not ambitious. He's not no. driven. He's not competitive. He's not motivated. And all of those are masculine traits that need to be channeled in a healthy way, right? To fulfill his masculine embodiment. Um, and I think it's it, it's you know you you put you made a post about it a couple of weeks ago. I remember you talked about you know the word submission when it comes to women, and and it's such a it's such a delicate term, right? And I'm still always seeking like <laughs> deference is a good word, I think, but there's still another word to be used because because I think women have felt yes, and it is and have been taken advantage of and have been, you know, by virtue of our own vulnerabilities and and different qualities um felt overly dominated by the masculine. We we kind of get our backs up when we hear submit to the male, but it's oh not gosh, about yeah. weak, li- you know, of slack. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it, it's, and I, but I totally support you because I believe in that it's not about weak submission and like worship and, you know, not control I, that it's not that at all. It's really about allowing them to lead because women in their Agreed. strong masculine insist on leading and that doesn't leave any place for the men to step into his natural self. And, and it, it creates a dysfunction we can still lead in our gentle, feminine, creative ways. But if we don't allow them room to lead in their way and give them the faith, like they need to know that we have faith in their decisions and their vision. And that's how we're supportive to them. If we don't give them the space for that, they can't fulfill their roles either. And so to me, that's how I see the submission, you know, and I I had to learn that myself. I totally agree. 
came into my relationship very heavily in my masculine, but I was a single mother for seven years. I was in a very abusive marriage. Yeah. Before, right. So like I was used to being the end all and be all and like I'm taking charge. And I had to learn that I can still do the things I want. I can still kind of suggest the ways that I think things should be done. But if I try to meet him head on and we go like, you know, battle ram head to head, I'm completely disempowering him and his leadership. Yeah. And so if I can sit back and allow him the space to lead with me by his side, contributing to his opinions or thoughts or, you know, bringing in my elements to it, but still allow, and st but still defer to his leadership. We create an incredible partnership that way. And frankly, if anything, it's only allowed my faith in him to grow naturally. You know, like I really do have faith in he's going to figure it out, whatever obstacle there is. I know he's going to do it. He can talk to me about it. I can make my suggestions, but at the end of the day, if I try to take charge, it doesn't go well for either of us because I'm eliminating him from the equation. Right. And, and I think yeah. that's a sense of freedom. Right. Exactly. Taking away his independence, his freedom of thought, you know, his, his ability to act and the masculine needs to act. Um, exactly. And, yeah. So it's, it's so, it's so interesting because I see so many relationships around me. And now that I see it from that, you know, pris through that prism, through that lens, I can't unsee it. I can, I can, you know, go, oh, that's the dynamic. You didn't let him sit, you know, you didn't just sit back or you didn't trust him because that's also part of it. When we're in our masculine, it's because our feminine is too wounded. And so we can't exactly. trust the masculine to act accordingly or, you know, in the way that would benefit us. And so then we try to take charge and, we're just wounding each other over and over, I think. Exactly. And it's crazy how many people are actually in a relationship where they don't actually trust each other. So yeah. then they're just ping-ponging off each other, or at least all in healthy dynamics. Like, if you don't trust their leadership, if you don't trust their guidance, why are you with them? <laughs> Number what? one, like if you don't trust them to lead you into something healthy and good in the highest, best interest of you both, then there's an issue. Yeah. Often people don't give that partner the space, which is the issue, but also they'll choose someone who doesn't actually have a similar path or similar goal in mind, which can be really important that you have those type of similar values and that you trust their guidance. That's why the vetting process is so important yes. before you ever just jump into a relationship with anybody. You have to Absolutely. make sure things line up for you and also the other person. But so many people just go like head in and don't take yep. any of that into consideration. So then the masculine guidance often gets overlooked or criticized or just yep. thrown out the window completely. Yep. And it's so interesting to see because for me, when it comes to that sense of submission, it's very similar to what you said. I trust him to lead and guide us into the healthiest and most highest timeline for us both. He knows what my goals and visions are and he supports them. And he also has goals and visions of his own. And eventually they're going to mix, yeah. right? Eventually they're going to come together and we're going to be doing something else together, which will be amazing. But I trust him in that. I trust him to be responsible for himself to make sure that he can provide not only for himself, but also his future and also us in the equation because I'm doing the same thing. And very similar path to you where, you know, being a single mom and having to be in that masculine for so long, it's actually quite a breath of fresh air to actually say, I trust you and your guidance and to just relax. I don't think I've ever felt this relaxed and not anxious. And that's one thing I overlooked in my past relationship was I was anxious every single day with that person and I couldn't figure out why. I thought it was a me problem. Technically, it was because I was just not in the right relationship. And I was just yeah. looking at the potential and just ignoring everything that was happening, mm. even though none of it really lined up for me at any point. Oh, that was a whole thing I had to process all on my own was that I was trying to fit like a square peg in a round hole for far too long. Mm. And once this man came into the picture, I was like, oh, this is what healthy submission is. You know, like I have all the trust in the world. He wants the best for me and us. And I don't really have to think twice. It's so liberating, actually. It takes such a burden off our shoulders. And it makes me really yeah. think about how, like how hard it is for men to be men. 
at, you know, especially, you know, even harder when we're berating and criticizing and picking and, and pushing them out of their roles. But just in general, the, the responsibilities and roles that they strive to fulfill are very difficult, especially in today's world. So, you know, I appreciate that team being taken off my shoulders. It has not been fun Same. being in the masculine. And it's a real breath of fresh air. And I agree, right? Because they they have their goals and ambitions. They allow you to, you know, to pursue your own. But what they're doing is with the vision of being able to kind of bring you into their vision of the world without stopping you from doing what you want to do right you know and exactly like I know in the beginning with my relationship it was very like why don't you call me during the day and what are we doing like I was very very microscopically fixated on frequency of communication and when are you going to be around and all of those things and when I started to learn how I needed to lean into letting him do and trusting what he's doing for himself, for his business, for his life, while still keeping me a part of it. It was that liberating feeling of like, oh, like I can just be me for the day. And I'm going to look forward to speaking to you at the end of the day. And I'll be so happy to share what we went through, you know, but my security isn't reliant on if you called me at lunch or if you answered the text I sent you this afternoon, because the thing that that came along with that that like that freedom and that that was a breath of fresh air it's like i can just go and do what i need to do and we will reconnect because i had that security in the relationship but also to understand that men are very singularly focused right like our brains are wired women are wired to multitask by virtue of being the the natural birth givers right like we have to be able to manage children and food and and keeping them safe and 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 like going especially in the modern world right like a I, in my head, when I talk about it, you know, there's always the the, the contrast of the sim, almost simplicity of, you know, primitive times where women were really just taking care of the kids, the, the you, you know, the young offspring and, you know, making sure they're fed and kind of kept together. Whereas today's world, we're taking them to ballet or to football or school, and then we're doing doctor's appointments and all of the things that we really meticulously have to manage. Our brains are much better wired for that kind of multitasking. Yeah but men's brains are wired for singular task focus. And so when we try to intrude on it sometimes, and I know some women are like that. I used to be like that too, where it's the constant contact throughout the day, um, questioning, uh, checking in. It's, it's a distraction for them. And it's an almost an added burden because they need to maintain their focus because they have their goals in mind and it's all for our benefit. And if we try to pull them out of it and then berate them for not living up to our expectations, we're diverting their energy. So, you know, in a healthy relationship with a good man, if you can trust him that he's doing what he's supposed to be doing for you, you can take a breath and take that space to then be you and relax and explore who you are or do your own thing, live your life and, and trust that you will come back together at the end of the day or at the end of the week, whatever your schedules are to reconnect, you know, and, and that's, that's a really, it it was a big difference for, it made a big difference for me to learn that. Absolutely. And then just naturally being in your feminine, you actually give so much to the masculine, like that love, that nurturance. And to be honest, most men don't get a lot of that feminine love. Most men are actually starved, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, for feminine love. A lot of them may not have had good relationships with their mother or other females in their life or other women, right? So then they come into it as well and they have things that they have to be open to. So the more relaxed you are with a good man, the more you naturally want to give him that love and nurture and create peace in his life. If you're really in your feminine, you can give that masculine so much peace And you won't even have to ask twice for a damn thing. (laughs) You won't have to beg. You won't have to chase. They naturally want to spend time with you. They naturally want to give. They naturally want to protect, provide in many different ways because of the peace that they feel with you. That's mostly what they're looking for. Are you making their life easier? Are you making it harder by being a part of it? And if you make it harder, they're not going to want to spend time with you. They're eventually going to physically leave because they just can't be in that space to where there isn't that sense of freedom for them. What you 
encapsulated it so perfectly because it's so true. They need our softness. They just want like, again, they just want us to be happy, but more beyond that, they just need to, they need the home to be a sanctuary or they need time with us to be their sanctuary from the battle of the outside yeah. world. Right. That's what they, that's how they see the world. And I've had more than one man, including my husband, but I've heard this from other men. The outside world is the battle. That's where they go to fight. They go to find provision. They go to protect. And when they come home, they need our welcoming. They need our softness, our love to make it all worth it. Because otherwise, what are they doing it for? Right. And Otherwise again, coming home to another battle. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so many women don't understand that. And I think that, you know, that is really key because we're so full of emotions and our communication levels. I really think I'm really coming to believe, especially when we're talking about very masculine men are, are not on the same level of capacity. Right. We can talk for hours. Most men can't necessarily handle that amount. Right. And I think we push them into a space where it's just too much for them. So they come home from the battle and they come into another battle and they're being bombarded with what they feel is either criticism or judgment. Right. And, and dissatisfaction. Um, and then on top of it, they're being asked to meet us on an emotional and verbal level that they they don't all necessarily have. But it doesn't mean that they don't love us and they don't care. They just don't have that same capacity all the time. Right. So, I mean, my, exactly. my husband, from the beginning, he used to say like you and your 900 pages, like, he's like, give me the first page. <laughs> right. And I, in the beginning, I used to get so offended and I would just be like, what? I am just trying to tell you blah, blah, blah. And I have learned over these years, really, he's, he's telling, he's being honest. He needs me to condense it, to share the most important parts. And he's more than happy to listen and be supportive and empathetic he just doesn't have the capacity for more. And that's why it's also so important for women to have women because we can relate on those similar levels and men to have men. And it doesn't mean he loves me any less at all. They just don't have necessarily that capacity. And of course there's a range. Like there are some men who are much more, have much more emotional capacity and, and the ability to verbalize it. And there are men that have less, but we judge them on that surface, like at the face value of it when we really need to be looking deeper and understand how they feel about us isn't a direct yeah. like reflection of like how they communicate with us. You know what I mean? Right. Like exactly. to, to discount how they feel because they're not able to meet us on the same level of communication. Exactly. They're not as emotional as we are. That's why they're so much more clear and direct. If you've ever watched any podcast with healthy men, oh my God, it's my favorite. Cause I'm like, oh, just give me the information. It's so direct and so clear yeah. and just so crisp. And there's no extra fluff at all. It's just like direct to the point and boom, straight into the heart, <laughs> which is what I love so much about healthy masculine energy, right? Yeah. And when you start to think about that too, whatever they are telling you, whatever corrections they are giving you, it is a gift. Yes. And that is when, as a healthy feminine, you have to really hear what they're actually saying instead of going into reactivity. And this exactly. is what I love absolutely, especially in the partnership that I'm in now, because I had like one moment once where I just like blurted something out that I didn't even mean to, and it's not even me at all. And he was just like, so I just want to make sure that we talk about this. And this is not something that I will accept in the future. But just so you know, like it's, we have to talk about this, right? And we did. And it was like a two minute conversation. And I didn't react. I was just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't know what that was. Like, I was having all these weird things come up in the beginning of the relationship. Not that I was bringing trauma into the relationship necessarily. It's just the fact that sometimes, especially as women, when you've had to be the masculine energy for so long, and then you no longer have to, you have to unlearn unhealthy behaviors. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. It's crazy how much and that can, is actually in the subconscious. You don't even yes. know is there. <laughs> and you can only unlearn it in relationship, right? Like you can do a lot exactly. of healing outside, but it's only in relationship face to face being triggered or, or being kind of catalyzed to these old habit reactions and wounds that you can then become aware of them and, and take, exactly. you know, and recognize them. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. and that's the thing. And they it, don't need the two hour conversation. I've learned that too. Cause I'm, super guilty of trying to force the two hour conversation and the why, and why did you do that? Why'd you say it like that? But you said it this way. 
oof, I'm not proud of it. And bless my husband for sticking through it all, <laughs> right? But he has endless patience. Um, but I've come to a place where I can understand, like, I can even just say it. I did not like that you said this this way, or I really wish you would do this and then leave it. They don't need the deep yeah. dive into it necessarily. We just need to address it and move on. And that almost gives them more opportunity to process it after because they don't process as quickly as we do. I'm not saying that they're not smart at all. It's just the way that they process emotions. It is a slower different. process for them. Yeah, it's different. And Absolutely. we need to acknowledge it. And and that's the thing too, you know, I, I kind of fought a lot against it in the beginning. I'm like, well, why do I have to be the one to, you know, recognize that or, you know, change this? And because sometimes it's unfair. And if we're the more yeah. emotionally aware um, and, and uh, available partner, then it may be uncom- incumbent on us to take the lead in that. But that's okay, because they will follow that lead if we lead with love and grace and and in the way that they can manage, you know. So yeah, it's, it, it's so crucial. And I see it so much today. I, you know, it, it's almost become a, a, like one of my missions that I just want women to understand this, because I see how sad men are sometimes, you know, that they are just so badly misunderstood. They try so hard. So many are giving up um, and they're just completely disenfranchised and disempowered from who they truly are and not appreciated. I mean, we wouldn't have the world we had today if we didn't have men like that. I'm not building a house. It's not happening. <laughs> you know, like, they're building, majority of them are building the entire infrastructures that have lasted for how long? I mean, look back at ancient civilizations, all the places that they built that still exist today, you know, 5,000, 10,000 years down the road, we wouldn't have any of that. We wouldn't have any of like the wonders of the world or the beauty without their infrastructure, without their guidance, without their leadership. (laughs) Without their sweat and their muscles and their bodies, you know, they they put themselves into physical harm. They do a lot of jobs that none of us could do or want to do, right? That doesn't align with feminine. And it's not to say that only men can do this and only women can do this, but it is to say that we are innately wired to gravitate to certain activities because of who we are. And I would never stop a woman from being a construction worker. And I would never stop a man from being, you know, a caretaker or a nurse, but that's not the majority. Right. And to, to not appreciate or to, to demean or malign the male population for having put all of that into place for us and done all of that hard work and created and sacrificed for us. You know, it's, I think it's so unfair and it's, it's just completely removes them from any important roles in society. And and you see that they just, they give up a lot of times or they, you know, prefer to stay alone because they, you know, don't feel that they're going to meet a woman who can actually understand them and their masculine. And their struggles and what they go through as well. Because they do. And we can't just diminish that because there's been some negativity that has happened in the past, right? And not trying to like brush everything away. But at the same time, we also can't diminish the amount of hard work they put in every single day and the sacrifices that they do make for family and how they do connect. And I have seen it same as well, where many of them are just choosing to stay single for their whole life because there is way less risk than actually getting involved with somebody. And that's where both energies, healing the masculine and feminine is so important so that they can actually attract each other and become aligned to each other and then radiate that possibility out to so many more people so that people can actually heal. When we have these divine union couples, they're like power couples taking on the world. Look at any big business. There's always a king and a queen beside each other. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing you're trying, you know, we, we need to be able to learn ways to do it together without trying to dominate one or the other by, by recognizing each other's strengths and qu- like qualities that complement each other, because together we're that much more effective, powerful, strong, connected, you know, all of that comes out so much more, incre- you know, profoundly 
when we can do that in a healthy way together, right? So I agree, exactly. you know, it's it's not about hanging on to negative things of the past. You know, I'm, I'm so glad women can vote now. You know, all of those things. It's, of you know, women, of course, equal access into society, but without that meaning that we need to push out the other half of society, right? And disempower them. And I think women would be like, I'm generalizing, of course, but it just feels to me that if we can connect in with that side of ourselves and and truly be able to embody the feminine, we'll also all be much happier. And that will radiate and allow radiate and allow men to be who they are and, and be much happier by extension, right? And just create a exactly. much more harmonious society. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think some of my favorite things ever too, is that when you are with a healthy masculine person is that I can bring my emotions to him in a certain situation and said, Hey, in this situation, this is how I felt. And immediately he'll have a solution. I won't have to tell him what the solution is, you know, and what I'm used to in the past is where the wounded masculine has said, well, you figure it out. You give me a solution. You tell me what to do. (laughs) And I thought that was normal. I was like, oh, maybe I should have it all figured out. But even recently, there was something that just made me feel off and I wasn't mad at him, had nothing to do with him. And, you know, I brought it to his attention and I was like, I remember being so scared to just tell him. Mm. I was like, if I do, is he going to get angry? Because that's what I'm used to. Right. And this happens to a lot of feminine people. They bring something up and then automatically you know, the wounded masculine will say, you're accusing me of something, or this is an insecurity, or it's a you problem. You know, I've heard that so many times. But in this case, I was like, hey, this is what came up. And instantly, he's like, oh, my gosh, I'm sorry, he dealt with it. It was done within like a second. And then he was like, are you upset? I'm like, yes, but not at you. It has nothing to do with you. It just had to work through my emotional wave. But that was the fastest I've ever gone through an emotional wave. And I'm an emotional 3-5 manifester in human design. So sometimes it can last like weeks. <laughs> but it lasted all of maybe 5, 10 minutes. He was That's just like, here's the solution, done. And he's like, oh, if this ever comes up again, here's what I want you to do. And I was like, thanks. Great. Awesome. <laughs> and Wait, we went on another day. <laughs> they are the problem solvers. And it's also, you know, they I are. think it's also sometimes in how we approach them, right? Like very often when we're in a highly emotional state, we can easily come off to them as very critical. Like they can easily take it as you're telling them they're not good enough. They're not doing enough, you know. Exactly. Um, And that may be a bit of their wounds. Yes. But as you know, there's, we can take the lead on that and modulate how we present it to them so that they can actually hear it and say, I really need to tell you something right now. This is how I've been feeling. It's not an attack on you. I want you to understand that, you know, like preface things sometimes so that they don't take our like (laughs) emotions, which we tend to go into as a complete attack or a punch in the stomach, because it's very easy for them to go in that direction. Sometimes our, you know, our self-containment and our ability to present things gracefully and neutrally in a way of like, just, you know, very clearly understand that this is how I'm feeling. Like you said, it's not to do with you, but this is what's going on for me. And I'm coming to you because I either need the solution or I just need you to hear me today. Just listen and don't even come up with the solution. Just be there. As long as they know what we're expecting of them, they're very happy to step in to do that, you know, and that's the other part too. It's us being clear in our needs because they don't really know all the time, right? They're just like, they're navigating this like wild emotional feminines person who's with them, right? And and so if we can, can imagine, clear, right? I mean, if we can be more clear about what we need from them from the start, then they're direct. more than happy. Yeah, they need the direct. They need the like, this is what it is. I mean, and I find the more, like the more hyper-masculine tends to need that too. They really just need the like, this is it. I'm not putting any expectations on you. This is how I'm feeling. or Whatever your situation is that you want to share with them. They're more than happy to step in to fulfill that Absolutely. as long as like the terms are clear. And I think that as women, because we're so emotional, we don't have that. We don't like 
cultivate that presence of mind beforehand necessarily. We just kind of come in because I know that like my best friend can call me and I'll be like, hello. And she'll be like, you don't know what happened today and blah, 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 blah. And I can, I can hold space for that, but totally. you know, try to do that with a man and it doesn't always go that well because then they're just kind of like, I don't know what you want from me or like freaking out. And you know, there's too much emotional space. There's too much, too many emotions here for me to even have the capacity to process. So, you know, and again, I'm talking in generalizations and, you know, some men are better at it than others, of course, but, um, there's so many nuances to it, to honestly, <laughs> sorry. So there's so many nuances to it. Of it's not course. just like and it's you know, five it's all, but to each relationship, you know, but I, that's at least speaking from my own experience and observations, you want to orient it. So it is going to be more receptive. It's going to be better received and not misunderstood or brushed away or like, oh, you're too emotional. Oh, I don't even understand what you're doing, you know, where they can feel safe. And, and that, oh, that was the other point that I was wanting to bring it to when you were also talking about that is by doing all of that, we create safety for them. We create emotional safety for them. And that's, what's important. Like they create the physical safety and we need to create emotional safety by not being harsh in our masculine, by not being on the attack all the time or critical when we give them emotional safety. And like you said, the love that a lot of men are so desperate for the feminine softness and love, when we can do that for them, that's when they can really step up and serve our, and like, you know, fulfill our needs. And that's when the kind of the partnership can really work well. Absolutely. And masculine energy is very healing energy as well. And yeah. I find it interesting because through my observations and the people I've worked with for like over 12 years now, most people don't even realize natural, healthy, masculine energy is healing. <laughs> you know, it just yeah. blows my mind because it is. Yeah. And I remember even just recently I was talking about something and he just asked me a couple direct questions and immediately I was starting to get emotional, not at him. But I started feeling emotional. He's like, oh, this is like a obviously a pain point of yours. And we he started talking about other things that he was seeing. And he was just able to bring up literally everything <clears throat> that was going on in my system that I had no idea. It just started with him pinpointing a fear that I had. And then it just stemmed from there. And I was like, whoa, I've never had a masculine person be able to do this with me ever. I've never had them highlight what I'm holding on to from the past and to be able to see it and get me to recognize it and actually hold me so I could release it was insane. And when men are in their healthy energies, sure, yes. every masculine energy is a bit different, but this is natural to them. They can yeah. also see their sight is so on point and yeah. we have to trust their sight. Absolutely. We have, because they, they're, they're really able to like pinpoint and see it from a different perspective entirely, right? Almost like a macro exactly. because they have the macro vision. We're the like micro details and they're the big, big picture. Um, they can kind of see it all, how it all ties in together and bring it up and hold the space for us. And, you know, he sounds like he's incredibly emotionally in tune, which is really beautiful for men um, to be able to not only just see it, but also present it to you in a way that doesn't dig at the wound, right? Like without yeah. it being, you know, in a nasty way, I mean, or, or too no, harsh of a way, I don't mean nasty, <laughs> but well, it ends up being uncomfortable, but, but was, like they yeah, can, sure. you know, even the masculine can sometimes be harsh because they're so direct. And so to us, it feels like, oh, that was mean or, oh, I didn't, you know, but it's really just them no. being direct and trying to point it out to us. And that's why, I mean, we really need to understand their language so that we exactly. don't paint them with such a negative brush. Right. And to just understand it's that cool. is their yeah. way, but there's no malice behind it. Exactly. They just want the best for you. And if I wasn't in a healthy feminine energy, I probably would have looked at him and said, oh, I've already healed that. That's not the problem. Nope, that's not it at all. <laughs> you know, I would have completely brushed him off and his sight and his guidance. And then what would have happened? Nothing. I wouldn't have released anything. I wouldn't have had that level of trust with him. He would have yep. felt completely dismissed and almost yep. discarded. Do you know what I yep. mean? Absolutely. But the and fact then that I was able to hold that. And even though it was uncomfortable and I was like, oh my God, this is weird because I've never had this, but 
the way that he is, I'm still able to stay soft in the discomfort and just mm. let him guide me. That yeah. is what submission is. So before people come at me. <laughs> well, and it's, it's hard. It's hard to be faced with things about yourself, right? And 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 it takes a lot of courage to sit and go and to even consider it and go, oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. Oh, you know, and, right. and take that yeah. as a reflection. It's not a criticism. It's a help in the way that they know how to do it, right? That's their their way. I love this conversation exactly. with you so much. We're almost at an hour. Though, and I think Instagram ah. shuts down after an hour. I don't, it like flew. We have to do this again. I would love if we could do yes, this again. Me too. Okay. Amazing. Okay. We'll you. continue the divine masculine and feminine. Maybe we'll, maybe next time we'll focus more on the feminine and really what the healthy feminine yeah. is um, and how we need to express. Um, that would be amazing. So thank you so much, Cassandra. This has been a beautiful conversation. Thank you so much, Talia. Oh, that's a pleasure. Oh, right. I love your energy. That's Such a, a joy. Likewise. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Amazing. All right. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Ending.